it's Sunday morning. It's the whatever date in March, Andrew's birthday. So uh, happy birthday, Andrew. If we don't forget to put you on the birthday bump yesterday. Anyway, gonna lift these tools out of here, get some soil in the buggy because there's some dogs been digging holes on the dog field. So we're gonna go and fill them in because there's a gap on it this morning. Can I just say, this is why I don't have a pickup because you amass all sorts of random artifacts if you have a pickup in the back of it all the time. And then every time you want to go come and do something, you end up lifting them all out and they're normally wet and soggy as well. So I'll stick to me buggy and me car. That's all what's come out so far. Filling the buggy is a job for the Mini Merlot. Uh, full tank of fuel, which is unusual for any Merlot I get on normally. So we'll go and scoop some up now. Back that up there now, and then I'll just try and load it. The problem is that's like four foot long and the bucket's like seven foot. We'll see what we can do. Savage, don't want to knock the back lights off. There we go, that should do, shouldn't it? That's it, I've just twisted the light, never mind. I'll leave this here in case I need more. There we go, stand that back up. Not bad off. There we go, off we go now. Let's say what we weigh. 15, 1.5 to 4 tonnes. So it is when we're empty. And we'll know how much weight we've had in the back. Yeah, the dogs dig holes, and then when it rains, they obviously get water in them as well, make them muddy. And then they dig more because it's softer. So we'll fill it in a bit. That's better. Uh, leave it a few weeks when it warms up a bit, probably scatter a bit of grass seed on that. This is a good one, fairly deep as well. Just gonna find the, fit, the holes now in field number two. I thought they were a good thing until we start to start paying rates on them. Now it's debatable whether they're worth the hassle. I'll just show you this here. This is how deep the topsoil is. You can see all the grooves in it from ploughs and cultivators and clade and drills over the years. We've tried to sow over it. That's why we put it to grass for this dog field because there's no topsoil to grow anything in. It's so shallow. Hey up, time warp. All right, Chester. While I'm going up and down, looking for holes, I saw this big stone here. So I bent down to pick it up and it had poo under it. There. Quick lambing update. Started lambing at Rain Hill. Two twins there, two twins there. That looks to be a single. Little one here. A few in there waiting to go. Meh. You know, I said before the Mini Merlot was putting a shed up last week. Well, this is it. It's looking pretty smart. So, Adam and Churipaka Richard put it up with the Mini Merlot. This post snapped off, so I thought I'll put a sleeve of that piece of wood in it and then stand that on top. But it's that deep, the wood drops right to the bottom. So I'm just gonna throw some stones in it now so that it won't drop all the way down. And then, hopefully, it'll sleeve it a bit. There we go. And that now, I'll go back on there. Like so. This one's welding up now. Some litter as well, come off the road. stuck on the hooks get me shovel uh, a little roundabout update not the one for ages it's actually finished but now they've started digging up the road going that way so there's a digger back here that is it it needs some sunflowers i think in the middle of it though just come to see this wheat where we patched up because it was poor behind these headland well look 
something that's dug it all up. Be rabbits. See the little sort of paw prints where they've dug down and chewed it off. It's a bit of a shame. Little holes everywhere. We don't actually have that many rabbits, just, just here. But can't actually see any wheat to be honest. Oh, there you go, they've been digging down to that one there, see? Just coming up now. Not too bad now. This was the field that took three attempts to drill and was dead wet when we did it. But it is coming up now in rows. There's a easy jet coming in. Yeah, so hopefully it'll start coming through a bit faster now the weather's getting warmer. A little bit of slug damage maybe on that one there and uh, a bit chewed. Bit of a shame. But we'll see what it looks like in a few weeks. You can see it a bit easier here where we disturbed it with the sumo ripping out the wheel marks from the combine. Obviously because you've got black soil and green stripes, it's a bit easier to see. We'll go and have a look at the other field now that was sown after potatoes. So it was black soil and we leveled it off. It was also sown a few weeks before that. Looks like an old piece of a plow I've just found on the floor as well. Put that in the buggy so we don't end up with it in a tire. Pleased with how well this looks though. This was sown into the failed OSR from last year. Yeah, it looks great. This is what it looks like into green, black shoots, green soil. Looks amazing. This is one of the reasons why people don't like direct drilling because you don't get the satisfaction of seeing that looking so neat and tidy like that. See the water flowing there? That's coming out of this drain. Sorry, let me zoom out. That's coming out of this drain we put in the other day. Which is keeping that bit of the field dry now. That bit in the middle was really wet so that you can see the drain going across there where the sand is. Hopefully that'll stay dry and then we've even stitched into it as well afterwards because we missed that out when we drilled it but now it's it's been drilled as well as this headland as well that was a bit damp. Over there looks okay though. This was the field that we had the summer barley on so it's obviously got two lots of stubble so you can see like the winter barley stubble, the spring barley stubble and then if you remember we chopped the straw off the spring barley well there's not really much of it left. See the little bonfires the worms have made. But they've mostly taken it all in. See all the worm casts. So I think we'll be able to just drill beans straight into this. I was worried that there might be a few ruts from where the combine had been but it doesn't seem to be at all. It doesn't seem tight or anything and like I say the straws disappeared. So we'll just drill straight into it. Right, while we're in this field, Olivia's going to quickly do the birthday bumper, so off you go, Olivia. George Harris, who is 25. Gary Hobbs, who is 46. Simon Harris, who is 59. Thomas Walker, who is 11. Rebecca Louise. That was just Rebecca, then um, Louise Robinson, okay. 46. Um, Andrew Orme, who is 25. So that's Andrew that works for me. Emily Ward. Emily Ward, 14. Imogen Harry's is one day old. Oh wow, cool. Sam Sharp, twenty-seven. George Gillian. Yeah. Could I say? And Henry Taylor, who is ten. And then oh, someone. And Britain's fittest. Someone farmer. put Britain's fittest farmer, Lucy Sheffield. I presume it's her birthday, so someone's obviously forgotten to buy her a decent present, so they're trying to get round it by doing that. Maybe I don't know, but yeah, twenty-seven thousand five hundred and seventy-six pounds. Amazing. Happy birthday, everyone on there and anyone else whose birthday it is today. Also, was Louise Hanley's birthday on Friday and my sister forgot to put her on there. So, happy birthday, Louise, for Friday. This field of rape was a little bit backwards. And you can see where the pigeons have been in chewing it. And it's thinned it out quite a bit. Hoping it'll still be okay, though. But there is some patches that have been totally, totally thinned out. You can see where they've been chewing in here. But on a headland, 
where it's a little bit more compacted so it's harder for the slugs and the slugs to move so then it's made it thick so the pigeons can't land it isn't too bad really plus it gets a little bit of extra seed but hopefully it'll grow faster than the pigeons now don't know if anyone watches harry's farm but he's lost a couple of fields completely to pigeons and slugs or whatever but he's gonna have to redrill them with something else we've we've had that in other years but this year fingers crossed everything we've sown will be able to take right through to harvest double bill today is sheep we're just gonna call on fiona and have a look at her lamb while we're so close what half an hour old and they were just walking around yeah. <laughs> 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 Go on, stand up, give us a show. No, yeah, yeah. Give us a stand up. Whee! The other one hasn't stood up yet. Yeah, because we turned in. Looking for milk already. Half an hour old. I was going to say... There you go. Both standing. Just in the Weybridge getting some hats for raffle prizes, because one size fits all. For the talk I'm doing that tomorrow at Part and Discussion Society or Parting, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it's right on the east. Anyway, um, might see some of you there. That's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, I've got loads of hoodies and t shirts now back in stock after they were out for a bit. So if you want any, go on the website and also we've got them fire extinguishers on there with a deal on them. So that is all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all tomorrow. Actually, before I go, one last thing. The Real Country File is out. You can go and check that out with the link below this video. It's this week's episode of The Real Country File. And also, there's a little video I did last night about a pizza that Charlotte bought that's got some very misleading packaging. So let me know what you think about that. It's, it's in portrait, not landscape. Sorry about that. But that's because it's better for Instagram, TikTok and different things. So that's what I'd put it on. So don't forget, follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Can anyone explain this? Maybe oldie. We've got, there we go, Specy Selected, Made in Britain, Italian ham. New recipe, German pork. What is it? Is it made in the United Kingdom? Is it Italian ham? Is it British ham? Is it German ham? What's going on? I thought Aldi was pretty good at selling British meat, but for something very confusing about all this, not even a red tractor on it either, which is obvious if it's German pork.